On this episode of Guards Cry Crazy, I have to tell you, we're hanging out with car guy royalty, the Duke of Duesenberg's Randy Eva, and the king of late night, Jay Leno. Well, fun thing about Duesenberg's is everyone has a story. This is the Model J Duesenberg engine assembly drawing. Randy's shop is the center of the universe for Duesenberg lovers like Jay Leno, who has worked with Randy on a variety of projects that are driven hard and proudly displayed in Jay's garage. With Randy's help, we're able to track them down and put them together yeah. properly so they run right. Most experts agree that the Duesenberg is the greatest American car ever made, and we're going to explore that thought with two of the car craziest guys I know. We traveled the world to talk with men and women who are passionate car guides to find out what makes people emotionally connected to their cars. Car it's time to get to the heart of the car guy. This is Car Crazy. In the late 1920s and early 30s, the Duesenberg represented the best of the best in engineering technology as well as an opulent style and panache for the super rich. No other car could match the performance or the luxury of the Duesenberg. The company was founded by the Duesenberg brothers in 1913 in Des Moines, Iowa to build sports cars, which ended up winning a lot of races, including the Indianapolis 500, which they won three times. This passion for speed kept their focus on performance even as they created these behemoth automobiles. Sadly, less than half of the original 1,200 Duesenbergs built are in the hands of collectors today, which is why they often sell for more than a million dollars. Randy Ema is the world's top Duesenberg authority, having devoted his life to the meticulous restoration of these automotive masterpieces, but also to the mass accumulation of original Duesenberg plans, photographs, and spare parts. Welcome to another very special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy here in Burbank, California right now, hanging out with my buddy Randy Ema. I love the restoration process for great classic cars, and Randy has been one of my favorite go-to guys throughout all the years. So great to thank hang you. out with you a little thank while. Thank you again, Barry, thank you. And of course, we're here in the garage of one of your famous clients who uh, has this night job to support his addiction for cool cars. Jay, where are you? You've been wandering around here. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, just taking a nap. Take a nap. <laughs> This is one of the few cars that have an actual studio apartment. That is an amazing car. It's a big car. I want to get to your relationship, but since you stepped out of this car, it is amazing. It is a great sleeper in the back. This was just supposed to be a utilitarian town car to take you to the theater, to take you wherever. It wasn't particularly stylish or fast as some of the other Duesenbergs were. And if you see yourself as a caretaker of these great cars as much as you are a collector, then spending more than the car's worth to make it historically correct is often the only option. The car is probably worth half of what we put in it, but that's okay. I mean, you're preserving a piece of history and saving a piece of history. If you make money on these things, you're doing them wrong. But Randy has done all these Duesenbergs. When you find a Duesenberg with a bad reputation, it's because it wasn't restored properly and it wasn't yeah. put together properly. When you have someone like Randy who knows the history of these things and understands all the intricacies of them, he's very lazy. You've got to give him to write a book and put all this stuff down. You but, do uh, but, you know, that's, that's why I have so many Duesenbergs. Randy and Jay have been working together for years, sharing their love for these great cars. Before we talk about the cars, let's talk about your relationships. I've watched you guys through the years, and this is not a business relationship. I mean, you guys are buds. I mean, you're soulmates. And how did it all start? Where'd you, where'd you guys first meet? Uh, Match.com, eHarmony.com. <laughs> he friended me, and I friended back. And, no, I, I bought a Duesenberg in uh, the late 80s, and uh, I called around a bunch of places, the restoration guys. But I know Randy sort of got his, his uh, master's degree in Duesenberg, <laughs> literally. That was, his, that was his thing in college and everything, and I went down and saw a shop, and uh, uh, just something felt right about the situation. Yeah. The one thing that's really nice about Jay, that this is his passion. You know, this this isn't just something he does, you know, as a man of, of considerable means. This yeah. is his passion. This yeah. is what he loves. But it's the same things that I want. Yeah. I want it to be authentic. I want it to do what it did when it was new. The thing is, you know, unless you use these cars, you're not providing work for somebody who fixes them and restores them. You know, you go to England, they have the Bentley Drivers Club, and all the Bentleys get driven into the ground. And then they make new parts, 
And consequently, there's a whole cottage industry of people who just work on Bentleys. Mm -hmm. I know, I, I've talked to a number of guys that own Duesenbergs that have never run them or started them. Well, <laughs> well what good is that, you know? <laughs> to me, you pull into Pebble Beach at 100 points, you drive it back to 60, 30, 40 points, and then yeah, you restore exactly, it again. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. By the way, don't scratch the paint here. No, this you, one you can scratch, because this, <laughs> this is a nice original old girl. Let's talk about this car, because this car had low wear and tear on it, and a very famous car. Let's talk about the Model X right quick. Yeah, well, this was what? Randy will tell you, the yeah, last Randy. Duesenberg built. This is the last design done by Fred and Augie. Well, this car was locked in a garage in the late 40s, and the garage really wasn't opened until, what, 2005. And it was too nice an original car to restore. It's only original once, as they say. And this is the original paint and the original wood. So we, we keep it this way, just in case a coach builder or somebody wants to come and see, oh, I see, those screws went in there. You try to keep it original. If something is totally rotted out and dangerous to drive, then you do the restoration on it, like this one. Yeah. This one was pretty far gone uh, when Randy got it, and we managed to, uh, he managed to bring it back. Uh, Perfect. Tell us the story in this one, Randy. It traveled in Europe several times. Yeah. It, uh, it was all over the world. Uh, the original owner kept it probably less than a year. He had this custom built uh, huh. to be a um, aerodynamic coupe, so it's very quiet inside. This was just built to run over poor people. Now, that's the <laughs> idea. Next up, Jay digs deeper into the history of his Duesenbergs, explaining why each one is so very special. This is the most powerful Duesenberg and the most desirable. You don't want to miss this. We're back with more of McGuire's Car Crazy, talking cars with famed restorer Randy Ema and Jay Leto in Jay's Garage. The fun thing about Duesenbergs is everyone has a story. It always makes me laugh when people come and say, we have a hidden Duesenberg we found in a garage. Just no one knows who it is. And I call Randy and he goes, <laughs> right. that's Larry's car. Every time I hear these stories, it hits me that these two guys have become the preeminent Duesenberg historians. I got a letter from an old man, a guy in his 70s, and said when he was nine years old, his job was to wash, wax, and polish this car. And he this owned, very car. This very car. Wow. So I gave him my address, and he came out here to California, and I brought him in here, and actually I made him get on his knees and wash and polish it again. <laughs> I said, he, well, he, he loved it, because he was nine, and just, you know, in the middle yeah. of the depression, yeah. to, oh, to, to sit in a car like this and polish it, oh, he thought that was the greatest thing. So. And to get the picture now has yeah. to be a treasure for him at this yeah, point. But yeah, but all Duesenbergs have a story. Randy had to convince me to buy this one. It's an unusual headlight here. Help yeah. us understand These why. These look like implants yeah. on a bad stripper. They're not. <laughs> this is a wind tunnel car, aerodynamic design. You look at the back. Uh, the tail lights are knife edge, so the air goes through them. There's no door handle, no trunk handle, so the air would slide off. And you know what actually works? And Jay's collection of Duesenbergs covers the entire spectrum from almost nondescript to high performance to stunning beauty. And this, of course, is the SJ. This is the most powerful Duesenberg and the most desirable. That's what they call the disappearing top roadster. It had the supercharger, uh, 320 horsepower. And what'd it take, about 35 horsepower to run the supercharger? At, at low Something RPM. like that. So yeah. at low RPM, you're yeah. not getting a whole lot. But And gas mileage, uh, almost non-existent. <laughs> it's like, what, six? Yeah. You just throw in 20s out the window. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. But you love driving this car. Oh, yeah, it's a wonderful car. And there's never a question about getting these cars on the road. For Jay, if it has four wheels and an engine, <laughs> it's good to go. This was a display chassis that uh, was not running. Randy got the whole thing running and together. This is a driver. You drive. Oh this yeah, car. we drive this chassis. It's amazing how fast it is when you don't have a two thousand pound body. It goes. It flies. Yeah. 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 So where'd you find this? Uh, bought this at an auction down in Georgia. It was wow. in a state yeah. auction. Uh, bought the Murphy convertible coupe and this at the same time. And when I got down there, yeah. he says, "Well, let's buy the chassis too." Yeah. So. Yeah. Once the restoration process is complete. The car becomes the responsibility of Jay's chief mechanic, Bernard, who keeps all of Jay's cars and motorcycles in top running condition. Bernard, turn around here right yeah. quick. Bernard runs the place, OK? Help us understand what it's like to work here. Uh, all you guys have been here quite a long. How many years have you been here? I've been here 10 years now. 10 years? What's, yep. what's, what's it like to work with Jay Leno on all these toys? Well, it's <laughs> like going to the candy store every day. You know, you get to play with the cars. And, and you know, we have a pretty good time doing it. A lot of camaraderie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you have to, because yeah. it's a small group. Yeah. Jay likes everything. I mean, he's pretty, he knows each car. He knows what's right. He's pretty particular. Talk about the whole dynamic of working with a car owner like Jay Leno. Well, 
One thing is good, we only have one guy to keep happy. So mm. that's that's mm. a good thing that's there. Good. He's a pretty easy going guy to work for. But how for. much fun is it to get these cars up to the level where Jay can go out and really have some fun with them? That, that whole well, dynamic. All, all the cars that he has, they're all drivers. So he drives everything, so everything has to be up. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting for us because we're, we're spanning like 100 years in cars. So we have a big diversity of yeah, cars. You know, yeah, we go, yeah. we'll work on a steam car one day, we'll work on a pre-war car, or, or we'll work on something modern like the Galaxy. Yeah. Jay is the first one that always admits that he is a founding member of the More Money Than Brains Club. Yeah. But yeah. I will warn everybody, he doesn't apply that to when he <laughs> purchasing cars. He knows what he's doing. He yeah. researches everything yeah. extensively. It's been awesome. Well, thanks. thanks You're so always lot. so generous with your well, time. Well, go down and see Randy's great. shop. We've got to go see him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. Mosey on down the sure, road? Sure, yeah. Okay. I think we can get the driver. All right. Fortunately, we found a willing driver and hit the road in style. How's the ride back there? Wide load. Thank you, driver. There you go. Hey. Coming up, every Duesenberg has a story, and Randy Ema's shop is the official library. This is such a treasure. Wait till you see it. Orange County, California, Mr. Duesenberg, Randy Ema's shop. And you know what? Inside this building, some of the most sought after cars in the world have been reborn and restored to perfection. It's here in Randy Ema's shop, with his meticulous attention to detail and historical accuracy, that these mechanical works of art are precisely restored to their original glory. Well, Randy has invited us here into his world, and I know this is, we're not publicizing really where we are. We are in Orange County. We can say that much, can't we? Sure. <laughs> I wonder if I know how special it is for us to be here. I mean, this is like hallowed ground. The history of Duesenberg that surrounds us here in this room right yeah. here yeah. is, it just boggles my mind. Help us understand what we're surrounded okay. by Okay. In this room, you know, we have all of the original drawings. There's 28,000 original drawings here. We have all the purchasing records, all the correspondence files with the manufacturers. So give us an example here. Show us what's in some of these files. Okay, great. <laughs> this drawer is mostly old photograph albums, and this is Fred, one of Fred's personal photograph albums. This is here, family album. The family album. We need to go back. What, what okay. inspired you to do all this? Oh, you know, okay. I ask everybody this question, but for you, it's, it's very unique. But your, your mom and dad weren't car guys. No, no, no. I had a neighbor lived like a mile and a half away, and I would ride by these old cars sitting in this driveway. And I finally, at, at 15, I was old enough and mature enough and had a bicycle now, I could go by and knock on the door. And they had two Auburn 12s, a sedan and a convertible sedan. So I started researching, you know, and and I was, I'm a dyslexic, I'm a practicing dyslexic. So I could- You really are? Yeah, so I practice it very well. I continued to dig. Um, and I got fascinated by history uh, and learned that I could learn things, finally. I, I had not ever been able to bring things into my mind and store them. You had this learning disability, obviously. Mm -hmm. You were doing poorly in school. You mm -hmm. had no interest. Mm -hmm. It was cars. Cars got me that going. That changed it. Yeah. So, you know, I got, I got into college, university, uh, got my bachelor's degree in history uh, based around Eel Court. Denny Duesenberg knew that I had acquired the factory Duesenberg. Denny was Fred Duesenberg's only son. Yeah. He asked me if I wanted to acquire all of the family materials that were in the Florida house. I purchased yeah. all that sort of stuff, and uh, and then when he passed away three, four years ago, he, to my surprise, left me an heir. So that's when I received the last of the photographs. No, okay. and so much I, respect for what yeah, you've done. Yeah, right. To, well, he to, wanted to see it all to, together. Fascinating, fascinating. Yeah. Well, can we kind of dig into the vault here a little bit? The first step in this amazing process requires learning everything possible from Randy's cachet of original drawings. This is such a treasure. I'll, I'll, I'll show you a drawing here. This is the Model J Duesenberg engine assembly drawing. Here we go. This is the Model J Duesenberg engine. I feel like we're looking at the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, well it is, basically, <laughs> yeah. So these are drawings, you rely on them now when oh, you're, sure. when you're yeah, working. Oh, sure, we occasionally sure. use them, yeah. yeah. This will give you an idea of what we have in drawing form, and this is, as I mentioned earlier, an assembly drawing. Now, yeah. don't roll it all the way out, because you'll unfortunately go out the door with it. So <laughs> is that long, yeah, really? Yeah, it's long. No kidding. So it's full size. So this is the exact size of the front. Every detail is on it, and everything is part number. Well, so often restorers are 
uh, uh, told me how they get to a certain place and they, they have to just kind of make their best guess of they what guess. it really looked like at, they guess. at the time. Yeah. I don't There's have no to guessing guess. here. I don't have to guess. Wow. That is an under headlight bracket on a Model J Duesenberg. Okay. And that is... This is a reproduction, I presume. It is a reproduction in that it is a new casting, but it is made from the original tooling and the original patterns. So, is so it's a not a reproduction. It's not a reproduction. <laughs> now, you have quite an inventory of patterns. We have over a 1,000 of the original patterns. We even have all the original supercharger patterns, but I don't like to change history, so I won't make a reproduction supercharger because there were only 38 built. Yeah. You know, now, right, today, right. So there's... So you wouldn't add them on to no, make an a J another, into an SJ. You're no, not going to no, do no. that. These are the templates for recreating original parts, the most important elements in authentic restoration. Help us through that project. What does a restorer face with when, yeah. he, when he takes on a project and the car's all rusted out and the parts shot, whatever it is? It's just, it cannot be restored, yeah. so you have to have a new one. Right. In well, each of those cases, you make each one of those parts. Right. We have to make it. We start the process, uh, uh, you know, with, with chrome plating, making parts, making pieces, this is a, a Model J Duesenberg carburetor. You know, we've assembled all the pieces we have, already replated it, put so on the So in this case, paint. this is the original, and you've this, re rebuilt it. This is a brand new part. We've made all these pieces. They're all new castings, wow. all machine, new shaft, new packing, everything. It's so interesting to see it at this stage. Yeah, yeah, it's just a bunch of pieces that ultimately yeah. goes yeah. Th and the puzzle, the pieces, the puzzle slowly yeah. towards the last few months really start Gosh, to fall into place. I mean, place. even though you've done it many times, it has to be so much fun as it starts well, to come Well, once it come finally about. starts to come together, it gets exciting. Yeah. Next up, Randy allows a sneak peek at some of his current projects. You want to look at cars? Yeah, 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 okay, let's, let's go for it. Okay. This is good. You know, in their day, Duesenbergs were the finest cars on the planet. I mean, the engineering, the design, the attention to detail. But for me, it's even more impressive how Randy and his team restore these magnificent cars to their original glory. I mean, look at it, it's fine art. Well, I remember when Jay won the Duesenberg class when uh, he took this to Pebble Beach, and I've always admired this car, wow. You know, I have a fun story to tell you about our trip. That, that whole weekend was an interesting weekend for us, but we got this all car all dialed in and all ready on Friday night, and I told Jay we would meet him down in front of the lodge with it. Jay and Mavis show up, and Mavis stood and walked backwards and said, that car is so striking. Oh, really? Jay, first thing he wants to do is jump in it, get behind <laughs> the wheel, and so we're only like a half block away. We start heading that direction, yeah. and I say, Jay, you turn left here. Oh, I want to go just a little bit further. So after we got through the 17-mile drive, oh no, we had to start all over again. Oh. <laughs> we had to redo all the wheels. We had the to spokes, redo the wax on the whole car. Of you can't have an inth of dust. This is its first time back in 20 years. He's been driving this car. Was, it, not, still, was it still in warning? Uh, you know, I'll have to contact the factory. <laughs> uh, oh, wait a minute, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> had a little slight little water leak in the radiator, Come and we had a crack in the manifold, so. But Jay drives his cars, obviously. Oh. So how many miles do you suppose he's put on oh, this I car? I think there's 10,000 miles on oh, this car. Oh, my goodness. You know. Oh, yeah, no, there's no sit back and relax. Wow. You, you sit back and you shut up and you hold on. What a, when you what go a, for what a testimony this is to you oh, and your well, team. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And like Randy, his highly skilled team of restorers settle for nothing less than perfection. What's it like working for this guy? He's a great boss. I've, <laughs> I've worked here, what, 20 years? Yeah, 20 yeah. years. Tom. They're a great bunch of guys to work for. Uh -huh. Really enjoy uh -huh. working with them. Some of these cars you would you would go to a museum just to see and get to, you know, work on them, drive them. Oh, let me just say, on behalf of car guys everywhere that are in all of your work, and I am in all of your work, you guys just keep rocking, keep it going, okay? Randy may specialize in Duesenberg restorations, but doozies aren't the only cars in his shop. Let me show you my Lincoln. Okay, I want to see this. Yeah. I'm not familiar with this one. This is a 27 Model L Lincoln, and it's a Judkins body. This particular car was delivered from the LA dealer. It lived his whole life here in Los Angeles. So, you know, like leather on the top and the sun visor is still the original materials. A lot of the interior stuff is original. Hey, talk about why you have two spare tires in the back of these cars. Well, you, you have to understand the roads of this condition. Most of the roads around here in 1927, it's yeah. all dirt. Yeah. And what is the standard delivery vehicle 
<laughs> throughout the, the, the United States. It's horse-drawn vehicles. Yeah. Horses have yeah. shoes to protect themselves right. on the road, right. and they drop nails. Yeah, These the tires nails. were soft, and you can mm. actually take one of those nails and poke right mm. through the tire. Mm. It was that soft rubber. Yeah, yeah. 7,000 miles out of a tire was a lot of miles, but yeah. you understand, seven, yeah. who drives 7,000 miles? major so. factor that we don't appreciate today. After this break, we'll find out what's really behind Randy and Jay's love affair. With the incomparable Duesenberg, of course. So are you guys having fun yet? Yes. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> Still playing with toys. Still kids <laughs> playing with toys. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy and our visit with Randy Ema and Jay Leno. Now we need to find our driver to take us back to his, I mean, Jay's garage to see some of his other cars. Can Fair. we look at the engine compartment in the package? Right sure. Here? So oh, unique. Yeah. This Packard, this is the Model 38. This is considered the first modern automobile in the sense that it, there was no crank handle, had pressurized lubrication, uh, all electric start. The first car to have everything on the dashboard in front of the driver. Everything is right here. What year is this? This would be a 13. They were so confident that this car would never overheat. There's not even a temperature gauge. Overheat? Get out. What's wrong with you? This is 1913. <laughs> Cars don't overheat. Hey, uh, one more car. We got to get it. We're, yeah, we're sure. running out of time. But well, this is a 1916 Crane Simplex. This was built to be an American Rolls Royce, and this is a car that nobody really wanted. It was up at the uh, Imperial Palace on display. I don't know why it wasn't really a desirable car in the late 80s, early 90s. I mean, it was expensive, but not crazy. And I went in, I kind of threw a price, and they said, "Yeah, fine, you can have it." And since I got it. Uh, now it's just gone crazy. I see it show up everywhere and, and uh, people appreciate it for what it was, this kind of skiff styling. Uh, it wasn't in bad shape. When we got it, somebody had done it all in brass. It was supposed to be nickel. Randy researched it and found mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. that it should be brass. And of course, the guys did a beautiful job steam bending this mahogany. This, I believe the mahogany yeah. is just gorgeous. And you know, the expensive thing about mahogany, it's not the mahogany that's on here that's expensive. It's the mahogany that breaks while you're steam bending. And it, ah! It's another piano every, yeah. time, yeah. every time this doesn't fit. So yeah. you can see the craftsmanship that Randy and the guys did on I mean, look at that, how beautifully it done is, that. Is. Is. That is a lost yeah. art. That is a lost art. Yeah. So are you guys having fun yet? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Still playing with toys. Still kids playing with toys. Yeah. They keep you young, don't they? Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it, it's the, amazing. The hair doesn't look it, but everything That's else right. is But there. everything else, yeah. the spirit and, yeah. The, yeah. and the passion and the energy. Do I have a good thing going or what? I mean, it's always fun hanging out with Jay Leno, but to get inside the world of Randy Ema, I mean, that's over the top. This is car crazy at its finest. See you next time.